I just found out I'm the product of an affair. It took 18 years for me to know the secret. Now my father's coming at me with some crazy news. Let's start from the beginning. This is what happened. Both my older brother and sister went to the same college. My brother graduated two years ago. My sister is set to graduate in two years. Both had their college paid by our father. Dad paid all their college expenses, including rent, food, their cars, pocket money, you name it. My brother has a job now. His own place, lives together with his fiance and his life together. My sister already has a good paying job. My dad still pays for almost everything for her. I got accepted to the same college, which was always the plan, and was looking forward to talk with my parents about the next steps and ask them to help me the same they did for my siblings. I always assumed they had money put aside for my college, the way they had for my siblings. Instead, I was met with a story about my mom's cheating, how I'm a result of her cheating, and how my dad's not willing to support me anymore moving forward. Dad told me that mom had 18 years to let me know and prepare me for the future, but obviously she never did. He said it was never his place to say anything since I'm not his son, and I did not want to interfere with mom's parenting. Apparently, my grandparents know I'm not dad's bio son, but they haven't bothered to tell me either. My siblings had no idea, and they're surprised as I am because there was never a hint of anything being off. I might be naive, but I always thought I had a great relationship with my dad. We go to sports together. We go fishing. He tutored me when I had difficulties with math. Dad's an engineer. He taught me to drive. I never got a hint he stores resentment towards me. I mean, he gave me my name and has explained what my name means. He was very proud of it. It's a story he tells me from time to time. He likes to talk about it, stuff like that, all about me. My mom's never said a word about a thing. And apparently, she was supposed to have, quote, the talk with me, but she never did. I feel abandoned and unprepared for what lies ahead. I'm not even sure I'll be able to go to college anymore. I just always assumed my parents would pay for it. I never had a job, and I'm not sure what job I can even get to support me through college. I have no idea how to apply for loans. All my mom's done is cry and apologize, but nothing of substance. She has no idea how to help me. I don't even know if I'm welcomed home anymore. It's all up in the air. I feel ashamed leaving my room, and if I will be asked to move out... I don't know where to go. I don't have savings, maybe 400 bucks. I'm angry at my mom, and I'm confused about where I stand with my dad. There's a man out there who's my father that never wanted to have anything to do with me. I feel rejected, and I have no idea what to do to fix this situation. Anyone got any ideas what to do here? Do I apologize to my dad? What do I say to him? I don't know. I've been stuck in my room these past few days, reading and browsing the internet. I have no idea what to do. What's up, guys? Mr. Redito here. I hope you're enjoying this story so far. It's a tough situation. I have three very small updates then we're going to hop into the major update. And trust me, you're going to want to stick around to the end of that one. If you're not subscribed to the channel, please press that subscribe button right now. There's a lot of people that view these stories and they don't ever click subscribe. So please do that. It helps me a lot. Here's mini update number one. Sorry to disappear, but nothing happened to me. Managed to talk with my mom yesterday, but I chickened out halfway through what I had to say. The good news is that I'm not being kicked out or disowned. Thank you for your support, everyone. I'll follow through and call financial aid. 
at my college in a few hours, and take it from there. My grandpa had a stroke last week, and my dad's helping my grandma with setting up a live-in nurse, so he wasn't around much yesterday. I'll let you know how I manage. Mini update number two. Sorry for not updating, my grandfather passed away yesterday. Nothing happened to me, but my situation is a secondary concern right now. Regardless, I think I'll be alright. Thanks to your amazing support in the comments. My sister, she's aware of everything, and told me not to worry she has my back and I have her support. I promise to update when or if there's any significant changes. Right now, I need support for my grandmother. Thank you again, everyone. Alright, here's the major update. I'm not sure if that's what you want to hear, but things are more or less back to normal, if you consider other events. Unfortunately, as you know, my grandpa died at the beginning of this week. I'm still processing it. I did manage to talk with both my mom and dad, and I now know where I stand in relation with them, as well as my siblings. I'm not sure I would have the courage to say what I had to say if not for the amount of help and advice in the comments, so make sure you always comment down below. I think it's safe to say both my parents love me, and what happened two weeks ago was an overreaction to a fight between my parents. It makes me uncomfortable knowing I'm not aware of my own environment, but a stranger in the comments can tell me what's happening in my life with just a few lines of text from a side. Also, a lot of comments were spot on about what's happening in my life. I have so far went through about 40% I guess of the comments, but I give up. There's too many and I have all the help I need. The conclusion is that I'm definitely going to college. It'll be the college I've always wanted to go to, and I'll have the same experience as my siblings. The money to pay for this already exists. My family's not going bankrupt as suggested. My dad just had a short little mental breakup with all the issues around grandpa and his fight with his mom. Even if my dad would have went through with his decision, my grandma let me know grandpa left me and my siblings a great sum of money that we'll have to split between the three of us, but enough to put me through college to say the least. What started the entire scandal was poor timing on my part. My parents just had a fight, and then I showed up. Hey, pay for my college. My parents were talking about us, their children, and mom said something along the lines of, to think you wanted to split up when I came back pregnant, or something like that. I wasn't there. This is just what she told me. I guess dad was talking how proud he was of his children, and mom wanted to express her gratitude for dad raising me as his own. And dad took it as, quote, the affair was the best decision I ever made, or something like that. And their fight escalated from there, and mom told dad something like, what makes you think any of them are yours? Yeah, it went downhill from there fast. Shortly after that, my dumb face showed up and here I am. Dad and Mom have since made up. Mom is still a mess. Dad's not handling my grandpa's passing away too well either. I did talk with my siblings and my sister raised a storm and wrote it here while blasting my parents on the phone. <laughs> my brother was calmer but made his feelings known in no uncertain terms as well once he got back home. My grandpa passing away was sort of a way to keep the spirits calm, I guess, and shifted the focus to dealing with that. Reading the comments was a mind-opening experience. I felt unprepared for the world out there. Many have asked how I had no idea how to apply for loans or grants. Well, in my defense, when you go year after year after year, knowing you have nothing to worry about, that your college is as good as paid for, you don't really have to worry about that. 
Of course, I knew there are loans and other things that students have to be aware of. It just simply did not apply to me. I went from, quote, I'm going to college, can't wait, to, quote, you're not my son, I'll not pay for your college, in less than 24 hours. Others have prepared for this at the very least. They knew they had to get a loan or get a job, look for a place to live, and so on. For me, it was a sudden change in reality. Going through the comments, I managed to put a list together with various tips and tricks. What jobs are available for students, how to find a place to live, how to get a credit card, a bank account, a cell phone plan, and so on. Really good stuff that I think, even after the return to normal, it's going to help me. My parents have been called more names than they go by, and that was uncomfortable to read, and I haven't read all those comments. I can't even imagine what else lies below. Dad is very sorry, apologetic, about his reaction and behavior. I understand his reaction, but I still feel hurt by it. I understand he was not in the best place of mind, but I can't control my feelings either. We will be alright, and this isn't really irreparably damaged our relationship. My mom, though, hasn't handled everything that well. She's coming around, and she answered some more questions for me. Here we go. When my mom had an affair, years ago, and got pregnant with me, my parents started divorcing. Mom moved in with the man she had the affair with, but after a few months, the guy decided he wanted nothing to do with it. He kicked out Mom, and she had nowhere to go. So, my grandparents took her in because she was still the mother of their grandkids. Mom and Dad got back together after a lot of work. Dad took me as his own, and that's my life since then. The man, who's my natural father, is not in the picture anymore. Dad did not really even know who he was, and Mom hasn't heard or seen him ever since. He was fully aware Mom was pregnant with his child. I guess he had more important things to do, but it doesn't sound like he was about to cure world hunger. She met him in a bar, not a fundraiser. And I don't feel a need to know any more about who he is. I thought about the matter the last two weeks, since I've been aware of everything, and haven't really felt a desire to know who he is, where he is, or heck, if he's still alive. If I have other siblings out there, I don't know. I was suggested to go and buy a DNA kit from 23andMe. Maybe I can find him that way. But I think I'll avoid doing this specifically so I don't find him or he finds me. As far as I care, I have a mom and a dad and a brother and a sister... And that's my family. Moving forward, I do plan on getting a job. Becoming more independent, but not an attempt to distance myself from my family. But to feel like I would not be lost in the world if my family suddenly disappears. My mom admits I've been babied way more than my siblings. And that they should have prepared me for what's coming next. I did learn where I stand with my family. And it's safe to say that I'm loved and I have options. I thought I'm isolated, but my world's wider than I thought. Grandparents, siblings, my aunt, my cousin, all have my back. I think my parents are human. They make mistakes, and even though this was not the greatest moment, I think I'll look at everything as nothing more than a weak moment in an otherwise wonderful relationship. So let me just tell you, the comment section was not happy about this story. The number one comment says, Hijacking top comment to say that so many people on here overreacted to the situation and made OP uncomfortable with the things we said about his parents and so on. On my behalf, I'm sorry. That's when comment two says, Nobody needs to apologize. With the information OP had, of course people were mad. How they handled everything poorly. As he said, in 24 hours, he went from, I'll go to college and work things from there, like my siblings, to, you aren't my son and from now on you're on your own. Guys, let me know what you thought of that little transition. Drop your comments down below 
and we're going to turn our attention to the final story of the day. It's about OP, who's a Korean female. Well, she's going to ma marry a white male, but it seems she's having second thoughts. Let me tell you exactly why. I've met my soulmate. He's amazing. I'm crazy in love. But the closer we get to marriage and children, the more resentful I become. I'm sad and resentful. At no one and everyone, and I'm struggling at how to come to terms with it. He's white. I'm Korean. We've talked about race on multiple occasions. He's even brought it up by asking what it's like to live in the U.S. as an Asian female. He listened to my experience and asked a lot of questions. He's the first non-minority I've ever dated who's made me feel heard and understood. He also has a million other wonderful traits. I love him very much, and I'm so excited to have found this person I want to share my life with. However, the more serious we get, the more frequently I experience episodes of anxiety about identity. I'm a Korean female adopted into a white family. My parents are white. My siblings are white. My extended family is white. My adorable little nieces and nephews are all white. And I'm almost always the only person in whatever room I'm in that's Asian. I struggled with identity issues as a child. I learned how to use makeup to make me look more white. I stuffed my bra, hated my hips, begged my mom to let me dye my hair and buy contacts. With age and a lot of therapy, I finally feel comfortable with who I am. And now I'm in a relationship with a six foot tall ginger. He's beautiful. I love him. But he looks nothing like me, and I fear that neither will our children. Maybe I'm wrong, but after using Google Images, I'm imagining slightly exotic-looking white children. I'm sure that they'll be absolutely adorable, and I'll love them to pieces. But they won't look Asian. When I thought about my life, I always imagined having children. I always imagined them being Asian. The idea of finally living in a home where there are people who look like me has brought me comfort for so long. And now I'm realizing that it may never become a reality. My partner and I, we plan to adopt. We want to experience pregnancy by having one biological child and then adopt the rest. Adoption is very important to me, but we're interested in adopting children who would otherwise grow up without a family, which means foster children and not the private adoption Asian infants. The likelihood of us coming upon an Asian foster child who's available for adoption is quite small. I've spent my life being the other, and now even the child who grows in my womb won't look like me. It feels like a death in the family. It feels like I'm grieving this life that will never be, and it's bringing up a lot of pain I thought I moved past. I don't know how to feel. I'm incredibly sad about the idea of not having an Asian child. But at the same time, I feel like his or her life would have been better if he or she did not have to grow up as the other in a predominantly white country. I love my family. I have no regrets about adopting. They're incredible, and I've surrounded me with so much love and support. I love my boyfriend, and I want to spend the rest of my life with him. But I have so much anger and hurt inside of me that I'm always the freaking Asian girl. I hate being the only Asian in the room. I hate being the only Asian in my family. I hate it. <sighs> and I hate that I stand out in whatever group I'm in. And now I'm realizing that there will probably be a family portrait hanging above our fireplace. My white husband, our white children, and there's me. So, a lot of the comments had some good advice for this story for OP. Here's one of the top comments. I think one way to solve this feeling of otherness is to meet and hang out with other Korean people. If you were to explore your heritage more, it might help you feel less alienated and more confident. Alright guys, so let me know what you think of that comment. I personally think it's a great idea. 
OP needs to dive into her culture so she doesn't feel so left out. Let me hear your advice down below, or if you're in a similar situation, tell me about it. That's all the content I have for you guys today. Thank you so much for tuning in. Hit that subscribe button, and I'll catch you in the next one. The latest Mr. Reddito producer, Christine Billings. Thank you so much for the support.